Dear colleagues, great to see you all here in this room again. Welcome to the closing session. I see you are excited, and I'm excited, and we have an exciting program for you. Please join us in welcoming our president, Gloria Perez Selmaron. Hola. You know, you're learning very fast. Thank you. Salamat tatang. Thank you for such a warm applause. I know that it's not only for me, it's also for all the people who have put together such a great program over the last week. Such great sessions, such important and science, such productive meetings. Our Secretary General, Gerald Leina, the IFLA staff, the officers and members of our over 60 professional units, the neurons of INIFLA Brains Trust, our sessions and special interest groups. To our volunteers, the National Committee. Wow. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I would like really to ask for your applause again. And you know why? Because now it's time to applause to each other for making this Congress such a success. said this so many times during this conference, but the more inclusive, more effective IFLA we are building together is based on you. And you are our energy source, our brain trust, our living, breathing ideas store. You make IFLA, you are IFLA. And I need to give a special thanks, of course, to my employer, Diputació de Barcelona, the Barcelona Council, of, uh, Provincial Council, because they allowed me to be here. And this is for me the best thanks I have to tell them, to be here with all of you. <laughs> they are giving the, the, I can't devote so much time to representing IFLA, to getting to know the global library field to understanding your needs, your ambitions, your hopefulness, and to working with you uh, to change, in a way, our mindsets, to build the momentum we are building now, to make the change happen. This past year, I has been full of such opportunities. I have had the chance to visit libraries and meet librarians from five continents of the world, Africa, Asia, North America, Latin America, and the Caribbean, and Europe. Global vision workshops convening, and of course, national library conferences and events have brought to me to 18 countries. Um, Austria, Brazil, Canada, Chile, China, France, Greece, Iran, Jamaica, Japan, Lithuania, Malaysia, Mexico. Russia, South Africa, Spain, the USA, and Vietnam. I have participated remotely in conferences in Argentina as well, Croatia, Czech Republic, India, Pakistan, and Paraguay. My family almost seems surprised to see me at home sometimes. <laughs> I'm a bit ashamed about it. So what have I been doing during this Pieces. But you, you can ask me, what you were doing in this visit? Clearly, as president of FIFLA, my first duty is to our members. I have met so many of you, so many passionate, committed people. People 
who do not need to be convinced that libraries are the motors of change. They have seen doing it for years, and they, they are the proof. You are the proof, and they are the future. You are the future. As you will have heard in my president's session, in, uh, in if the IFLA president has a unique position. One food in the library field, another food outside. The president must be an ambassador as much as a leader. They must advocate for libraries to non-librarians as well. I ask, I ask you, I ask you to absolutely bring our collective voices together and make the case for our institutions. So I have also talked with ministers, officials, and diplomats from the United Nations to local authorities, all levels. And these meetings, I have argued that libraries need to be at the heart of national de development, especially on the national development agendas. And they need the resources, the laws, the stability to fulfill their mission in their com uh, communities. I have underlined what you invest in libraries, you receive money. I speak Catalan with my own family as well. But I know very well that we librarians, librarians all over the world, they, we, we speak the same language. We speak the language of access to information. This is a wonder. Any other profession does do this. So we share the knowledge, the access to information, education, research, health information, information for jobs, uh, culture, government transparency, or whatever you call it, improves lives and improves societies. And this, this access must be meaningful, meaningful, must be really substantial. I'm from Barcelona. I'm living in Badalona, but I'm from Barcelona. Barcelona is proud to call itself a smart city. And it's where the World Mobile Congress uh, has held every year since uh, 26, many, many years ago, started this uh, special uh, smart congress. For me, the clearest saying that Barcelona is really smart is when I read the results of the municipal service survey the, and see that people value Barcelona's libraries as the best public service of the city. This is what is smart. Do you know why? This is so powerful for me. I hope uh, your communities will say the same. Because, as I said in Jamaica, in the opening of Global Media and Information Literacy Week, access to information cannot be meaningful if it's just about cables, computers, or cell phones. Access must be include the ability to understand, to apply, and create information, and this requires support, education, training, advice, or simply hand-holding, because in the end, it's down. It's down to the individual. Each individual needs to have the knowledge and skills, the attitudes and confidence necessary to navigate the information they face. They are not smart cities without, without smart citizens. And this meaningful access to information is what libraries make possible. I have another year in my term, but I'm only getting started now. I have been energized by the global vision. Thank you, Gerald, for this global vision. We are working on it. The amazing number of participants across seven continents, the fact that we are united in our goals and values, what we have heard and seen in our regional workshops, it was really an enrichment of myself, of IFLA as an organization. I have been energized by what you, what you colleagues have been doing to advocate for libraries around the world. Your inventiveness, your tenacity, 
your arguments. I'm convinced that we are the beginning of a movement, a new wave of librarians advocates around the world demanding that libraries be recognized and supported as drivers for development. As providers of literacy, as the backbone of research, special research networks, as educators, as a first source of help for those who need it most, showing the way and bringing others with you, every librarian and advocate. We said many times and we have to repeat. But also every librarian a member, a pillar, a node with, within the uh, emerging United Global Library field. I'm so much looking forward to meeting more of you over the coming year. Seeing what you are doing, hearing about your plans, reading your ideas in the ideas store, because I'm an idealist, you know? I'm really an idealist. I'm not ashamed to be an idealistic, to be idealistic. We have to be idealistic in our goals and show the way towards better, more sustainable world. And this is what uh, we are building, a better world. We are building, all of us, a better world. Not only with nice words, uh, but through concrete steps built a stronger, more inclusive IFLA. A trusted voice, a strong voice, a reference point for us all. An IFLA, an IFLA of all of us, can make change happen, can make progress happen through mean, meaningful access to information. As I said last Sunday in the president's session, my presidents, libraries are not victims of change, of, of the change. They should just not have to sprint to keep up with it. They can drive it, they can drive the change. Libraries can drive change. To do this, the motors of change have to move up a gear. We have to trust in ourselves, in our own power and the superpower of all of us, the members of the, this big family that IFLA is. Recognize and celebrate success. Uh, learn from it and go further. Working together, working for our users, working for a better world. Thank you and see you all in Athens. Terry Makassi. Thank you, Madam President. Now we are going to celebrate, to celebrate this conference and to celebrate outstanding people here. I invite Vicky McDonald, Vice Chair of the Professional Committee, to present the committee's awards for 2018. Please, Vicky, join our president on the stage. Gerald and good afternoon colleagues. IFLA's, pres oh, maybe it's done. <laughs> IFLA's professional committee coordinates the activities of the professional units in IFLA. That is the work of all the many excellent, enthusiastic and dedicated professionals that work in the sections, core activities, review groups and special interest groups. They have helped to produce this inspiring program of sessions and meetings this week and the satellite meetings that have taken place or are about to take place. But their work goes on during the year to produce guidelines, standards, advocacy materials, newsletters, books and online discussions, and deliver workshops, seminars, webinars, and much more. The effort and dedication of these people is very much appreciated by us all, 
and it makes it a pleasure for my colleagues on the professional committee and me to work with you all. To recognise the vital contribution and work of the members of the IFLA professional units, the professional committee has established a new award in 2018, the IFLA Dynamic Unit and Impact Award. This award recognises the success of IFLA's professional units in achieving the expectations of a dynamic unit, as defined by the professional committee. All IFLA professional units are eligible to nominate for the award. Ten nominations were submitted to the professional committee this year, identifying very qualified and diverse candidates, each of them demonstrating the increasing quality of the work carried out by the IFLA units, and each one showing deep dedication to the global library world. We truly hope that next year even more units will be nominated and we will be able to share the progress and the good work that they are doing in support of IFLA's mission and of the libraries that they represent all over the world. Submissions have been evaluated against a number of criteria, including quality and impact of the work, communication strategy, and membership and leadership engagement and development. Every nominated unit showed strengths, assets, and developments in matching these criteria. The task of the jury has not been an easy one. The professional committee is therefore very happy to be able to announce that together with the prize awarded to the winning IFLA unit, a special mention of two other units. We have certificates for the two runner-ups which they can collect at the end of the ceremony. First, for combining the constant quality of its work with a remarkable and proactive recruitment and engagement strategy for members and leaders in the unit, the first runner-up is the public libraries section. So congratulations to the public library section. And for, and for combining a growing number of relevant activities across the work fields of IFLA and with a strong effort to disseminate the content of its work and ensure global access to the tools and projects that are put in place, the second runner up is the Environment, Sustainability and Libraries Special Interest Group. <laughs> And now to announce the winner of the IFLA Dynamic Unit and Impact Award for 2018. It's just like the Oscars, I have to make you wait. <laughs> so, thanks to the solid plan of activities and working method leading to the delivery of a variety of services to IFLA members, a broad and inclusive communication strategy and a robust collaborative approach within and beyond its standing committee this unit is making a high quality impact on its own membership and on the wider audience across other IFLA units and across all areas of the profession in our transforming global library field. The winner of the 2018 IFLA Dynamic and Impact Award is the Continuing Professional Development and Workplace Learning Section. I invite Katerina Isberg, Secretary of the Session, to come forward and accept this award on behalf of her unit and fellow Standing Committee members. So congratulations, Katerina, and your section. And now to the best IFLA poster for 2018. The jury for selecting the winner of the Congress's best poster of 2018 was comprised of IFLA professional committee member Antonia Arrava, IFLA governing board member Agnes Ajur Barat, and representatives from the professional units Ila Ramo and the Arts Library section. The general impression is that the quality of the poster has improved this year. The design and layout is clear, 
nice and appealing. It was again a very difficult job as there were very many fine posters, but we have identified a top three. So a special mention... <laughs> So a special mention to poster number 70, Smart Selangor Mobile Library, The Trojan Horse of Books from Malaysia. And we also have another special mention to poster number 26, Library Tour Using Virtual Reality and Augmented Reality, the National Institute of Education Library Experience from Singapore. And the winner is, for the winner of the best IFLA poster for 2018, creating strong young readers in a digital media landscape, Lottie Hivnig Dibre. And Lottie is from Denmark, but I see that her seat is vacant. So we will arrange to, um, to send her the certificate following the, uh, today's Congress. Lottie's poster is an innovative, colourful, eye-catching, very attractive poster with a clear message about children's reading habits in a digitised world and the changing role of the public library. It has to do with a very important worldwide issue. So perhaps we again congratulate Lottie on, on her fantastic poster. So congratulations to everyone and thank you again for all your hard work. Thank you. Thank you, Vicky, for the presentation and congratulations to all the winners. You really deserve it. Each year at the World and Library Information Congress, IFLA presents the scroll of appreciation to the Congress National Committee to acknowledge our gratitude to them for hosting our Congress. But what a Congress here in Kuala Lumpur. We have enjoyed a wonderful Congress here in Kuala Lumpur and you cannot imagine how many challenges this National Committee had to tackle and they did it with great, with grace and great success. I now, I now invite Dato Nafisa Ahmed and Dato Saiton Osman, Chair and co-chair of the IFLA Malaysia National Committee to please join the president and me on the stage. Please come up to us. Shouldn't do uh, Gloria, uh, and they should do it in the middle. In the middle yeah.
The EFLOS role of appreciation is also awarded to members who have given distinguished services to EFLA. EFLA also presents a scroll of appreciation to Karen Latima in gratitude recognition of her distinguished contribution to EFLA and international librarianship, particularly in the field of library buildings and design and enhancing the understanding between librarians and architects. Please welcome Karen to the stage to receive the scroll of appreciation. IFLA also presents a scroll of appreciation to Marie-Sophie Dubai Matba. Please join me on the stage here and in grateful recognition of her outstanding contribution to IFLA and librarianship, particularly in strengthening of awareness of preservation and conservation matters in French-speaking West Africa. Please welcome Marie-Sophie to the stage to receive the scroll of appreciation. And now we have to apologize again for the picture, please. <laughs> The EVLA Medal is awarded to a person or organization that has made a distinguished contribution either to EVLA or to the international librarianship. The EVLA Medal is awarded to Theresa Hackett. For more than two decades, Theresa Hackett has exercised her deep expertise in copyright for the good of librarians. She has made a major contribution to realize Evla's belief that people, communities, and organizations need universal, equitable access to information, ideas, and works of imagination for the educational, cultural, democratic, and economic well-being. Working closely with EFLA's Copyright and Other Legal Matters Committee, CLM, Theresa has been a driving force and source of insight and expertise in EFLA's effort to secure an international treaty for libraries and archives at the World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO. She has always maintained a focus on practical support to make change happen nationally. The tools and guides resulting from her work have helped libraries in numerous developing countries to gain previously unavailable rights for their institutions and their users. Theresa deserves immense credit for her work to negotiate the Marrakesh Treaty for the visually impaired and to secure its ratification in 43 countries already. Her tireless work has helped ensure that the treaty has come into force more rapidly than any other WIPO copyright instrument in the last 40 years. Theresa's work in Geneva and around the world has been a model of library advocacy. 
Leading by example, she in inspires others to do more, to send the, that last email, draft that last revision, or make that last minute phone call that could lead to greater support for libraries. Through her sustained engagement with member states, publishers, and civil society organizations and libraries, Teresa Hackett has influenced others and substantially changed the library field for the better. She is therefore a worthy recipient of the Evla Medal. So good evening, Madam President, President-elect, Secretary General, dear friends and colleagues. I am truly honored to receive the award of an IFLA medal. My first encounter with copyright was almost by chance. In the year 2000, I became director of EBLIDA, the European Bureau of Library Information and Documentation Associations. When the first pan-European copyright legislation was being finalized in the European Parliament. At stake was whether libraries could make fair use of material for preservation, education, and other social purposes in the digital environment. So I had to learn real fast, get stuck in, and I've never looked back. In 2005, I had the opportunity to launch Eiffel's Copyright and Libraries program, engaging in national and international law reform, helping to grow a network of copyright librarians from Armenia to Zimbabwe, and advocating at WIPO, the World Intellectual Property Organization, for an international legal framework to benefit libraries and their users. At WIPO, a personal highlight and a tribute to everybody involved came in 2013 when the Marrakesh Treaty for Persons with Print Disabilities was adopted by member states after more than five years. And I can add many long days and late nights in Geneva. But from early on, I came to realize how vital it is for libraries to be present at the forefront in shaping copyright laws. Because copyright underpins equal and free access to information and knowledge. The value most highly rated across the whole library field in IFLA's Global Vision Report. And in copyright debates, librarians are strong advocates speaking up for the public interest. I'm very grateful for the professional support I've enjoyed throughout my career. Serving on CLM, IFLA's Committee on Copyright and Other Legal Matters, learning from colleagues and sharing many memorable moments. One of my proudest moments was in April this year in Kyrgyzstan, when Eiffel co-organized the first international transfer of an accessible format work to Kyrgyzstan from Canada under the Marrakesh Treaty. And this, ladies and gentlemen, was a real, we can make a difference moment. So together, let's continue making that difference. I thank you very, very much for this uh, honored award, Guramila Magav.
Thank you, Teresa. As you know, opportunity number five of the EFLA Global Vision, every librarian and advocate. What an example here. The EFLA medal is also awarded to Buchle Mambo Dato for her distinguished contribution to EFLA and international librarianship, championing and mobilizing library associations and advancing the library and information sector across Africa. Buchle is a passionate and visionary leader whose efforts over the past 20 years have changed library associations and the library profession across Africa. She has served on EFLA's Africa section from 2002 to 2007 and on the EFLA governing board from 2009 to 2013. Buchle is known for her exceptional ability to mobilize resources to fund capacity building. She was a trainer in EFLA's Building Strong Library Association program and, uh, and crisscrossed Africa not turning and developing the capacity of professionals within national library associations. When she was appointed director of the University of South Africa services, Buchle immediately implemented platforms to increase thought leadership in African libraries. With her wide international links, she was able to secure the support of global libraries to organize the first African Library Summit and the first African Public Library Summit. The existence of AFLIA, African Library and Information Associations and Institutions, is a direct result of the networking and interaction among African librarians at these events and her engagement in its formation. Her network of colleagues and visibility across the continent were an asset when uh, UNISA applied to host IFLA's regional office for Africa. Within the able assistance of the regional office, IFLA has been able to further extend its reach out through Africa. Buchle is recognized among her colleagues as a mentor and role model for librarians across the regions and therefore a deserving recipient of the EFLA medal. this evening to receive the IFLA medal. I'm humbled and excited. And as I accept the medal, I'd like to express my sincere gratitude to individuals and organizations that nominated me and were involved with the nomination process in any way. Madam President and the Executive Committee, thank you for finding me deserving. I've been told, and as you can see, the recognition is of the achievements and influence in mobilizing library associations and instigating development projects for librarians and libraries in Africa. Furthermore, I was blessed to have worked with committed peers and contemporaries. I acknowledge and appreciate their work and support. A big thank you to our partners who have worked with us on this journey. Together, we have pursued 
what in the words of President Barack Obama is the audacity of hope. Hope to see Africa's libraries strengthened, hope to see African librarians take their place, and hope to see communities transformed through libraries. I'm grateful to our Federation IFLA and many other organizations that afforded me opportunities to participate and serve the international library community. Thank you to my colleagues and to fellow workers who supported me on the journey, starting with the University of Botswana, the University of Zimbabwe, the University of South Africa, and my current employer, AFLIA. Without their support, we would not have achieved this work. Sincere appreciation to my friends for being there, for supporting me. Please allow me to appreciate my family for their support, especially my husband, Ray, who has learned to enjoy library congresses. <laughs> for life itself, I'm grateful to God, my, my creator. In conclusion, my fellow librarians, the journey of transforming communities through libraries will not be finalized in my lifetime. But it is my belief that the foundation we have laid is strong. In this room, Madam President, are a group of energized young Africans. It is to them that I dedicate this recognition to their energy and to their aspirations. I challenge you to work hard, to collaborate, and to continue this journey of transforming communities through libraries. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Madam President. Honorary Fellow is EFLA's highest award. Honorary Fellowship may be conferred on a person who has delivered long and distinguished services to EFLA with outstanding achievements and that has brought distinction to EFLA in the international arena. On behalf of EFLA, I'm delighted to present the EFLA Honorary Fellow to Sinica Sipila. Sinica. May I please ask you to join us in the stage? You know all Seneca very well, I think. And in the depths of being, Seneca Sibylla is a true librarian. You all know it. Through her work at the Hemelina City Library and the University of Tampere, she formed the belief that libraries are powerful agents of social change, strengthen communities, and assist individuals in their daily lives. In addition to her work, Sinica became active on the board of the Finnish Library Association and was appointed Secretary General of the Associations in 1997. She actively promoted cooperation with Nordic, Baltic and other European library associations during her term of office. As a result of time spent working in Tanzania, Sinica discovered a passion for library development. She was involved as a library expert and advisor in projects undertaken by Finnish universities and government in Africa and Asia, inspiring others in belief in the role of libraries in the development of societies. Sinica's contribution to IFLA is extensive. As a member of the Standing Committee and Chair of Management of Library Association Sections, MLS, on the EFLA delegations to the UN, the UN World Summit of, on the Information Society, co-chair of the EFLA World Library and Information Congress 2009-2010, 
2012 in Helsinki, one of the most successful conferences of IFLA. On the IFLA Governing Board, 2007 to 2013, and as IFLA President, 2013 to, to 2015. Her presidential theme of strong libraries, strong societies, emphasized the capacity of libraries to promote equal opportunities and equality access to lifelong learning and education, to research and innovation and to culture and recreation for all. The theme resonated with many and provided inspiration to the development efforts of library associations in diverse nations. In 2014, Sinica launched IFLA's Lyon Declaration on Access to Information and Development, to which over 600 library institutions and organizations around the world become signatories. IFLA was able to use the declaration to create effect to advocate for the inclusion of access to information in the United Nations 2030 agenda and sustainable development goals and in meetings with governments. In 2015, Sinica, in conjunction with colleagues from the African continent, led a high-level meeting of national librarians and ministers from a range of countries across Africa, resulting in the Cape Town Declaration. The declaration is a commitment to provide the necessary resources for the development of African libraries, allowing them to respond to the modern day challenges and provide access to emerging technologies. The theme of her presidency is still being quoted and forms part of her legacy to the profession. Sinica's significant efforts on behalf of IFLA and her contributions to library development at the international level qualify her as a worthy recipient of IFLA's highest honor of honorary fellow. Madam President, Gloria Perez Salmeron, Secretary General Gerald Leitner, IFLA leadership, distinguished guests, dear colleagues. It's hard to find the correct words to express my feelings right now. Being awarded this honorary fellowship, the highest recognition by IFLA, makes me feel flattered, happy, and humbled all at the same time. I would like to warmly thank the Executive Committee of IFLA for this esteemed recognition. My connection to IFLA started in 1997 when I attended the IFLA Congress in Copenhagen. I can still remember that con first Congress. The most overwhelming impression then was that it was wonderful to see so many colleagues from all over the world, coming and representing the same profession, our dear library and information sector. I still recall that feeling every time I attend the IFLA World Library and Information Congress. Today, when I'm looking at you, dear colleagues, it feels so empowering to think we all have the same mission, to help provide access to information for all. We may work in very different circumstances and conditions, but we have, in principle, the same view that libraries exert a significant role on societies 
and on how they diversify and develop. There are no other institutions, like libraries, that can promote and equal opportunities and equitable access to lifelong learning and education, to research and innovation, and also to culture and recreation, and not only for a privileged elite, but for all. This is why I so firmly believe that libraries are the foundation stones for building stronger societies. My theme was also inspired by experiences in different countries, but also by those gathered by the Finnish Library Association. From library users throughout Finland. We asked them how libraries had changed their lives. We got hundreds of responses from all age groups and from all parts of the country. It was touching to read their stories of the importance of libraries to their lives, especially in the remote areas where there were virtually no other services left than a mobile library or a small, small branch library. People were so grateful for all the opportunities that their small libraries could offer them. The same kind of experiences were described in many, uh, many conferences I attended during my term. I have learn, learned that no matter if we are from a so-called developed, developing or transitioning economy, one thing is very clear. The more that our libraries are developed, the better they can support their user communities and promote socio-economic and democratic development, and in that way provide benefits of all sectors in society. I have been very privileged and thankful to have had the opportunity to, ser to serve IFLA in the management of library associations section, on the covering board, and ultimately as president-elect and president. I would like to extend my sincere thanks to all the colleagues with whom I have worked and who have supported me on the way. I would also would like to thank you all for sharing this moment with me. The journey has been an unforgettable experience that is today topped with this highly appreciated honorary fellow award. Thank you very much. And now, a new award. The Vlick Wow is awarded to a person who shared the most inspiring social media post on Facebook or Twitter and demonstrated the benefits of attending Vlick to our wider audience. We had an incredible number of Vlick Wow entries. This dynamizes our outreach. Thank you everyone for sharing your Vlick vows. They were really all inspiring. But the Vlick vow winner is Nenkem Osigawi. <laughs> After a careful review of hundreds of Vlick vow tweets, Facebook and Instagram posts, our communication jury has selected a serious of Vlick Wow messaging that best meets our criteria of, of, for this year's Evil Vlick Wow Award. Her posts, including the one up on the screen now, truly captures the spirit of the award and shows how chance encounters during Vlick can lead to inspiring moments. I now invite Nierkam to, st to the stage and congratulate her for winning this year's Vlick Wow Award.
the World Library Information Congress passport competition was created to encourage active engagement with the exhibition. The winners of the free registration to the World Library Information Congress 2019 are Akmal Baria Omar and Leo Siu Lane. Congratulations, and we look forward to seeing you in Athens. So many awards, scrolls, winners, but one group we cannot and will not forget. This two-year IFLA International Leaders Program has come to an end. They all worked so hard. They presented at international meetings from the Internet Governance Forum to WIPO and United Nations. They participated in the International Advocacy Program, Global Vision, Library Map of the World, and their own specific project that will benefit the global United Library field. We are so proud of you. Please come to the stage when I call your name and we will have a group picture taken when you all have received your certificates. This means then you will turn the back to the <laughs> colleagues. Jonathan Hernandez Perez, Robin Kier, Mahmoud Khalifa, Elvira Lapuz, Mandai Nantiai, David Ramirez Ordones, Vesna Vuxan, Yan Zhao, please come all to the stage. Such a group of young leaders can only learn and thrive when they have great mentors and counselors. Please, I invite you to come to stage. Helena Asamoa Hassan. Claudia Lux and Jacinta Veri. We also thank Nancy Queen for chairing the seminars days. She cannot be with us here in Kuala Lumpur, but we will make sure she receives her certificate. Thank you all for the great support of this enthusiastic group of young, very qualified librarian professionals. You are really our future. <laughs> I ask now our president to give the certificates to this outstanding group of young leaders. You are all exceptional, really.
They deserve really a big applause. They were not only trained, they gave so much for EFLA already. And now I'm coming to a very, very important and exciting point. I'm pleased to announce the location of the EFLA World Live and Information Congress in 2020. It's a total secret. <laughs> in 2020, we will be meeting, you will be all surprised, in Auckland, New Zealand. We are really excited uh, to go really to this part of the world where we haven't been. And it's really a great idea to go to New Zealand and to see all the wonderful libraries here and to celebrate, uh, to celebrate our community in Auckland, New Zealand in 2020. I now invite the National Committee to give us a presentation. Please come to the stage. to everyone attending the IFLA conference in Kuala Lumpur. My name is Jacinda Ardu and I'm the Prime Minister of New Zealand and I understand you've just heard that New Zealand will proudly be hosting you to the IFLA World Library and Information Congress in Auckland in August 2020. Um, I was so excited to hear we were making the bid and to hear that we've been successful is just fantastic particularly given that Open, Trusted and United will be the theme of the Congress in 2020. Um, that's a set of principles which we as a government fully support. And I know uh, that IFLA is driving towards, for instance, the Sustainable Development Goals in the same way that we as a country are. Libraries, access to information, to education, to creative spaces for adults and children is at the core of who we see ourselves as a country. You are so supportive of that through the work that you do, which is why you are so welcome here in New Zealand in August 2020. We look forward to seeing you all and hosting you for a wonderful Congress.
We are going, I'm sure, we are going to have a great, great Congress in Auckland, New Zealand, and we will have a lot of fun. But I think we have to start to train our, our singing abilities and also our <laughs> dancing ones. Yes, and now we are at next year already. I have now the pleasure to invite Alexander Papasugoroli, president of the Greek Association of Librarians and Information Scientists to the stage. Please, Alexandra, join me on the stage. Dear IFLA President and Governing Board, distinguished guests, colleagues and fellow delegates, my first IFLA conference in Stockholm in 1990 was an eye-opener to the international world our libraries represent. Ever since, these conferences have never stopped amazing me, as has this one in Kuala Lumpur. The WLS, uh, WLIC always energizes us and enriches us professionally, culturally, and personally. It brings down the barriers of different countries and cultures and offers a global vision for our profession. In our countries, in our libraries, we are faced on a daily basis with challenges we need to overcome in order to provide our users with the services required to support them and help societies move, move forward. At WLIC, we understand that we are not alone in facing these challenges. We have common problems and similar rewards. This is why WLIC is an experience worth repeating. WLIC 2019 will be held in Athens, the city of Athena, goddess of wisdom, the city of the Acropolis, the cradle of democracy. Athens is known all over the world for its myths, its contribution to civilization, philosophy, the arts and sciences. It is a city worth experiencing in one's lifetime. Modern Athens is a vib vibrant metropolis, full of vitality. In addition to the archeological landmarks, the visitor is offered exceptional cultural and culinary experiences entertainment and shopping. Athens is also the gateway to the unique Greek islands and their beautiful beaches, to the Peloponnese and the mainland, places full of history, archeological sites, museums, interesting architecture and good food. Before you come to Athens, do plan a holiday to one of these places. When in Athens, you'll be welcomed by your colleagues, the Greek librarians. They represent a constellation of academic, research, public, special, and school libraries that have been evolving during the last 20 years with new buildings and services. Their flagship is the National Library in its new building. The Greek librarians will also welcome you in their own libraries during library visits. On behalf of the Association of Greek Librarians and Information Specialists, Scientists, I would like to invite you to the WLIC 2019 in Athens. Do come. All of us will be there to welcome you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alexandra. I would, like, I would now like to invite Dr. Filippos Zimbulu, Director General of the National Library of Greece, to the stage. Please, Filippos, join us here. Dear colleagues, we invite you all to Athens, Greece. Each one of us has his or her own logical reasons for participating. I will emphasize one, symbolism. 
Athens, Greece is a symbol for librarians. In the GUI, the librarians, members of a dynamic community, this period of time needs symbolism all over the planet. Come to Athens to synchronize your energy and your ideas, to analyze problems and synthesize perspectives, to learn about theories and practices, to criticize methods, techniques, programs in a series of topics concerning our hybrid or hybrid libraries, like strategies and policies, economics and ethics, prototypes and cataloging, philosophy, technology, and genealogy, electronic databases, and optical character recognition. Come to Athens, dear colleagues, in order to reform the myth that this is all Greek to us. <laughs> because all these are Greek familiar to all of us. Come to Athens to pass from myth to history, to continue the utopia of the never-ending dialogue for end, dialogue for change with logos, ethos, and pathos. Come to Greece. Dear IFLA members, we look forward to welcoming you to Athens, UNESCO's World Book Capital for 2018. Hosting the World Library and Information Congress comes at a wonderful conjuncture for Athens, as we have been investing in culture and the knowledge industries as drivers for growth. We cannot wait to introduce to you our historic city as a contemporary destination. What a great city, what great people. I can only encourage you, come to Greece and celebrate with us an outstanding Congress in this marvelous city. What I would like now to do is to invite Antonia Arachova, head of library of the President's Office of the Presidency of the Hellenic Dem uh, Democratic Republic and IFLA Governing Board member to the stage to invite you to this wonderful city and to this wonderful country. Please, Antonia, come to us. Dear Madam President, dear Madam President-elect, dear Gerald, Secretary General, dear colleagues, it's 2018 and it's my 18th IFLA WLIC, and I have the honor to invite you all to Athens. This is real an age of change as our president's theme. And many, many things are happening for the very first time. You know, probably in IFLA's history, it's the first time that a, a Congress is under the auspices of the president. Our president, Mr. Professor Prokopis Pavlopoulos, who is a library lover and who supports and will support the IFLA WLIC in Athens very strongly. Come to Athens because as John Millon has said, Athens is the eye of Greece. Athens is the mother of arts. Athens is the mother of elegance. 
come to Athens and get inspired. Get inspired, as you saw in the video. Get inspired by the environment, by the antiquities. Get inspired by people. And as Lord Byron has said, if I am a poet, this couldn't be if I, had, if I hadn't been in, in Athens. So I invite you all to come to Athens, one of the most historical cities in the world, and enjoy good food, the, the best view of uh, the Parthenon, and make the IFLA, W-L-I-C, a really very successful, perhaps the most successful conference ever. And I want you now, because we hadn't prepared to sing as our colleagues from Australia, but what I want you to do is, <laughs> to New Zealand, I want you to clap your hands and say, Athena, 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 Athena. Come all, uh, we, wait it, we, we wait for everybody to come to Athens 2019. Thank you, Ifla. Thanks, colleagues. I'm, I'm really sure we will have a fantastic Congress also in Athens and uh, hope to see as many of you there. But colleagues, we are at the end of one of the best IFLA conferences I joined. It's my 20th IFLA conference, but it is really a vibrant Congress here with such good vibrations and I uh, really enjoyed here to stay with you in Kuala Lumpur. And I guess we all enjoyed it. This was an outstanding Congress which our colleagues uh, from Malaysia organized and I would really like to now invite the co-chair of the National Committee to join us here on the stage, Datun Nafisha Ahmad. Please come up and keep the conference wrap up. Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here this afternoon just to say thank you, thank you, and thank you. First, thank you to IFLA, especially to Madam President, Mr. Secretary General, Madam President-elect and all governing board for successful IFLA WIC 2018. <clears throat> my heartfelt gratitude also goes to my co-chair, Dato Dr. Zaiton Osman, please. <clears throat> and all national committee members and the team of the enthusiasm commitment in order to ensure WIC 2018 a memorable event for everyone here. Today, we have proven with teamwork spirit, everything is possible, like our important keyword for Malaysia. Malaysia! 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 Malaysia boleh mean Malaysia can. I also would like to thank the Librarians Association of Malaysia Council members and my colleague from the National Library of Malaysia for all the hard work, diligence and professionalism. Ladies and gentlemen, I also would like to convey our thanks to the Ministry of Tourism, Art and Culture 
and our supporting partners, Malaysian Convention and Exhibition Bureau or MICEP. Kuala Lumpur City Hall and also our local sponsors for supporting us. I cannot end my speech without thanking the media people for excellent coverage, <clears throat> the positive exposure on the local media, newspapers and social media provided a wide exposure on our profession and our services. Thank you all of you are great. Most importantly, biggest appreciation to our dedicated and cheerful volunteers as our ambassador. Please join me to give them a big round of applause. Last but not least, thank to all our participants who travel from near and far. We wish you a safe travel home. For, ho for those who are staying to continue their holiday in Malaysia, enjoy the diversity, the color, and the taste of Malaysia. Terima kasih and enjoy Malaysia. excited about attending the different talks and also meeting lots of other librarians from around the world. It's a large crowd and definitely like my bag. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's one of the best, the best IFLA conferences we had here. Regarding, uh, the Conventions and uh, good vibes, uh, great host, wonderful here. Life is motors of change. Such an initiative as the Heat Block Global Vision. Various tourist attraction in Malaysia. The World Library and Information Congress 2018 Open. It's lots of good sessions, great people. As always, it is great and it's a huge, huge place of networking and I really like it, as usual. With delegates from over 170 countries converging in Kuala Lumpur for almost a week, we can look forward to meaningful discourse, engaging discussions and interactive knowledge sharing. Big success for IFLA. 
So I think it's a good opportunity for uh, uh, mainly for Asian and for people from other part of the world. They can enjoy the diversity that Malaysia offers. Food, traditional culture is very much fun. Especially today, we enjoyed a lot all of the evening. As far as I know, the National Committee of Malaysia would hand over a gift to the next hosts of our, our Congress. Would you do it now? Please, okay. Yes, thank you for wonderful days in Kuala Lumpur. And yes, we can organize together wonderful conferences. And we will have also next year a wonderful conference, as so many in the past. And yes, we had more than 3,500 colleagues attending the conference here in Kuala Lumpur from 112 countries. And as I said at the beginning, unfortunately, not all are able to come to Kuala Lumpur. It's too far away. Therefore, we give the opportunity with live streaming to attend at the conference. And we knew that it's necessary to give this chance if you want to have uh, a great outreach. And what you see is overwhelming. We have 95,000 95, people who attended this Congress virtually were live streaming. This is enormous. And you see, this is a chance to make EFLO open to all, and we will continue this way. Yeah, I would like now to ask our president to close it. Please come to us. Dear colleagues, again, our thanks to all involved in this uh, incredible Congress and to all participants as well. I now formally close with sadness. I now formally close this Congress. <laughs> Thank you. See you all in Athens. Athena! 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 See you! <laughs>